The 3D Ground Navigator is well packed in a robust Paley case to protect its contents. Let's see what's in the case. The most important thing is the user's manual. You will find all information about assembling and using the machine as well as analyzing the scans in this manual. The Visualizer 3D software comes on CD or pre-installed on a tablet PC. It is used to receive the measured data and to analyze your scan images and potential finds. The control unit is the operation center of the ground navigator. You will select an operating mode, store ground scans in its internal memory and initiate data transfers to the Visualizer 3D software. The very special telescopic super sensor is used to scan the underground for hidden objects. The USB data cable is used to transfer the measured data to the Visualizer 3D software. The mountable sensor handle can be attached to the telescopic super sensor to carry the sensor in an efficient way. The Bluetooth headphones allow an easy recognition of any sound output from the control unit. There is a travel adapter to use the charger with any power socket worldwide. The charger is used to recharge the built-in battery of the control unit. As already mentioned, the user's manual is the most important thing. So please, read this manual before using the 3D ground navigator. Let's have a look on how to extend the telescopic super sensor. Hold the upper segment in your left hand and with the right hand you grab the middle part. Give it a little turn and pull it out. You do the same procedure with the lower segment. For clearness, let's repeat this process with a short animation. Your left hand is holding the upper segment all the time. Your right hand grabs the middle segment right on the tube and turns it just a little bit away from your body, as indicated by the arrow. Now you can pull the middle segment out of the upper one. Finally, you turn the middle segment back into place. Repeat this procedure with the lower part and remember, the left hand is still holding the upper part, while the right hand turns the lower tube. Don't grab the end of the probe, because this will not turn the tube. If you like to minimize the probe, you simply reverse the process. Again, the left hand keeps hold of the upper segment all the time, while the right hand unlocks the lower tube by turning it away from your body. Now you can push the lower tube into the middle one and turn it towards your body to lock it. Repeat this procedure with the middle segment. If you want to hold the probe in the right hand, then the rotation direction changes into the opposite. So the right hand holds the upper segment of the probe all the time. Turn the middle segment towards your body, pull it out and turn it into the opposite direction to lock it. Finally, you turn the lower segment towards your body, pull it out from the middle segment and turn it back to lock it. To minimize the probe, simply reverse the whole process. After extending the super sensor to your personal needs, you may attach the mountable handle. Therefore, you place the handle perpendicular to the probe. Then you push the handle on top of the probe and turn it by 90 degrees. Now you can carry the probe by using the handle. To get prepared for the scanning process, 
Simply pick up the control unit to wear it around your neck or over the shoulder. The next step will be to connect the super sensor with the control unit. Pay attention to the little arrow marks on plug and connector. To get rid of the cable, simply hang it around your neck and you're ready to start measuring the underground. The first operating mode is magnetometer. Power on the control unit by pushing the power on button. On the display you will see some short messages. Then the display shows the main menu with magnetometer as first option. Simply press OK to activate this option. Now the device is ready, so grab your sensor, lift it about 5 to 10 cm over the ground and push the start button. When the button has been pushed, start walking a straight line and listen to the sounds of the control unit. The magnetometer mode is used to detect ferrous metals like iron and iron-based alloys like nails, screws, wires and other trashy objects. Each time you pass a ferrous metal object, the tone of the sound will change. This operating mode is used to clear the surface of an area to get better results from any of the other operating modes. Always keep in mind to hold the probe straight downwards to the ground. Do not swing the probe left to right. Do not pivot the probe right to left. Do not swing the probe forth and back. The most used and important operating mode is ground scan. After powering on the control unit, push the right arrow button to select option 2, ground scan. Activate the option by pushing the OK button. Now you have to adjust some settings. First you need to decide if you like to scan automatically or manually. In manual mode you have perfect control where you take a single scan value, because you have to push the start button to record a value. In automatic mode the control unit records value after value by itself. The second parameter is the number of scan values per scanning path. You can pre-select the defined number or select auto to determine the final number of impulses at the end of the first scanning path. The last setting is the transfer mode. Select memory to store all values in the internal memory of the control unit. Select computer to transfer the data directly to a connected PC with Visualizer 3D. This option is not available if the number of impulses is set to auto. As soon as all parameters are set, the control unit is waiting for the operator to get ready. The ground scan operating mode is used to create 3D graphics of the underground. Therefore the operator has to walk several paths to collect enough data. Here you can see the parallel scanning procedure, where the operator scans a path and then goes back to the start, steps to the left and scan another path. Let's roll back now and see this procedure in detail. No matter what operating mode you are using, the distance between sensor and crown should be around 5 to 10 cm. For this example, we will define an area of about 5 by 5 meters. You always start on a corner and scan from right to left, as seen in this example. The red lines are our scanning passes. You can easily see that this is the parallel mode, since all arrows pointing to the same direction. Each of the blue dots represents a scan value that can be measured manually or automatically. Now you start walking the first path to collect measure values. 
If the first line has been finished, you come back without measuring and then you step to the left to scan the next path. This procedure is repeated for all scanning paths. As you can see in this perspective, there are two lines and about 8 scan values that hit our treasure. If we lower the number of passes, also the number of values hitting our treasure will decrease. But if we increase the number of scanning passes, even more scan values will hit our treasure. This can also be influenced by decreasing or increasing the number of scan values per path. The more scan values hit our treasure, the better you will see it underground. On the left side you see a scan image with only 4 lines and 5 impulses. And on the right there's an image with 13 lines and 35 impulses. Can you see the difference in quality? One more thing. It's absolutely recommended to repeat each scan in the same way with the same parameters. This is called control scan to make sure the values are valid. Next to the parallel mode there is zigzag where you scan forth and back. So you will scan the first path then step to the left and scan the next path backwards. Let's also see this procedure in more detail now. We are also starting on the corner and scan the first path. Now we step to the left and scan the second path backwards. And again to the left and scanning the next path. We repeat this procedure until we finished the scan. This procedure is for professionals only and not recommended for beginners or on hard terrain. One more thing, it's absolutely recommended to repeat each scan in the same way with the same parameters. This is called control scan to make sure the values are valid. The third operating mode is discrimination. It is used to pinpoint detected objects and get a rough identification of the type of object. This mode is only working with a connected computer to see the data live on screen. You have to walk a straight line and when you pass an underground object you may decide about its type according to the signature. There is a specific signature for non-ferrous metals like gold, silver, copper or bronze. Here you can see the signature, which is a positive amplitude. Another typical signature is very special to ferrous metals, like iron-based objects. The signature is a positive and negative amplitude. The third signature is indicating voids like tunnels or chambers, without any metals. This signature is only a negative amplitude. To transfer data to a PC, connect the USB cable with the USB port of the control unit. The other end you have to plug in into a free USB port of the computer. Now power on the control unit so the computer can recognize the ground navigator. Before you can transfer any data, the USB drivers need to be installed. This step may be skipped if you got a pre-configured computer from your dealer. If this window will not disappear within some seconds, you can close it manually by clicking close. We have to install the drivers by ourselves anyway. Therefore, you have to click the Windows button, then you click on Settings, now on System and About. 
In the window on the right, you scroll down and click on Device Manager. After the Device Manager appeared on screen, you can get rid of the previous window. Now you select the 3D Ground Navigator entry and right click with the mouse. You click on Update Driver Software and then on Browse my computer for driver software. Now you have to select the driver folder from your Visualizer 3D CD, which is located under Drivers USB Cable. After clicking on Next, the drivers will be installed. As you can see, there is a new entry called USB Serial Port that also needs to be updated with our drivers. So you have to repeat the whole process again. There is a new USB Serial Port available. Here a COM port number of 3 has been assigned. Please keep this number in mind because you will need it for the actual data transfer. Now let's see how to transfer the scanned data from our control unit to the computer. Therefore, start the Visualizer 3D software and click on the New Project button. In the upcoming window, you have to select your device first, which is the Ground Navigator. Secondly, you select the COM port number that you learned during the installation of your drivers. If you got your computer from your dealer, there might be a sticker on your package with the correct COM port number. Please pick the right number from the interface list. The next thing you have to select is the right operating mode. After scanning an area in ground scan mode, you select ground scan. If you are going to transfer live data in discrimination mode, you select discrimination. Then you enter the number of impulses that you have used for a single scanning pass during ground scan. In our example of this user's video, we used 20 impulses and we did a parallel scan, not zigzag. After clicking the OK button, the software is ready to receive data. Now you have to initiate the transfer by selecting the force operating mode transfer memory to PC. When the device is ready, push the Start button. After all data has been transferred, click the Stop button. The next step would be to enter the characteristics of your scan. So you may enter a meaningful title and some additional remarks that are important for your scan. Furthermore, you have to enter the length and width of your scan area, as well as the soil type. Only then you will be able to determine position and depth of your potential objects. Please read the user's manual for detailed information concerning the usage of Visualizer 3D. There are also additional instruction videos on YouTube. In noisy environments, we always recommend headphones. In that way, you can hear the magnetometer output as well as the synchronizing sounds of the ground scan. An easy way of getting the right distance between probe and ground is to use your foot as a measure tool. If there are obstacles like sticks and twigs and bushes on your area, you have to avoid to get stuck on them. You also have to avoid to lift your super sensor. But you can of course start your scan with a general higher distance over the complete area. But the best thing is to remove all obstacles where possible. The best tip of all, read the user's manual, because there are a lot of important information in it 
that makes you a better ground investigator. At the end of this user's video, we recommend you some additional accessories like the power pack that is useful to extend the operating time of your ground navigator by hours. For carrying purposes, there is a special power pack mounting kit to carry the power pack easily on a belt strap. Thanks for watching this user video of 3D Ground Navigator.